Hello, I'm Jackie from ieltsjackie.com. Welcome to this video on Advantages and Disadvantages Essays. Questions for Advantages and Disadvantages Essays can be worded in several different ways. Here's some typical wording that might be used. What are the advantages and disadvantages of? Do you think the advantages outweigh the disadvantages? Discuss the advantages and disadvantages and give your opinion. It's also common for synonyms of the words advantages and disadvantages to be used, such as benefits or drawbacks, as can be seen in this sample question. A lot of places in the world rely on tourism as a main source of income. Unfortunately, tourism can also be a source of problems if it's not well managed. What are the advantages and disadvantages of tourism in the modern world? Do you think that the benefits of tourism outweigh its drawbacks? I'll be using this question to guide you through the process of planning and writing an advantages and disadvantages essay later on in this lesson. The first essential thing you need to know is how to analyse the question, which I'll be showing you how to do. I'm also going to demonstrate step-by-step step how to plan and write advantages and disadvantages essays. Here's what we'll be covering. Understanding the essay questions, essay structures, how to plan, how to write an introduction, how to write main body paragraphs and how to write a conclusion. You'll find in-depth lessons on planning and writing introductions main body paragraphs and conclusions on the website and in related videos. I've put links to these in the notes below this video. IELTS Advantages and Disadvantages essay questions fall into two main categories. Questions that ask for your opinion and questions that do not require you to state your opinion. The first part of the question will always be a statement. You'll then be asked to write about both the advantages and the disadvantages of the idea stated. You may also be required to state your opinion. Here are two more sample questions for illustration. For the first one, you must give your opinion, but in the second you should not. Small businesses are disappearing and being replaced by large multinational companies. Do the advantages of this outweigh the disadvantages? Most career choices demand vocational skills or specialist knowledge. However, despite this, most schools still teach academic subjects such as history or social studies. Discuss the advantages and disadvantages of this. Now let's look at two simple structures that you can use to write advantages and disadvantages essays. They're on this slide and the next one. They're not the only possible structures, but are ones I recommend because they're easy to learn and will enable you to quickly plan and write a high-level essay. I'll explain later why I'm giving you two slightly different structures. Both of them will give you a well-balanced essay with four paragraphs. Pause the video and spend a few moments studying them. Here's essay structure one. And this is essay structure two. The question will state advantages and disadvantages in the plural, that is more than one. However, it is acceptable to write about just one. This should give you an essay of just over the minimum 250 words. To write about two advantages and disadvantages will require you to write nearer 400 words which are a lot to plan and write in the 40 minutes allowed. It's better to fully develop one advantage and one disadvantage than end up with your second idea missing an explanation or an example because you run out of time. But you can write about two if you feel able to in the time and more comfortable doing so. Having said that, using essay structure two, where you start with the examples, will enable you to easily add more than one advantage and disadvantage without having to write many more words. It will be more suitable for some questions than others, so bear this in mind when you're writing practice essays and try out both structures. 
I'm going to use Essay Structure 2 to show you step by step how to write an IELTS Advantage and Disadvantage essay. I'll also give you a model answer using Essay Structure 1 so that you can compare the two. You should spend around 5 minutes planning your essay before you start writing. It's essential that you do this as it will save you time overall and will result in a far better essay and thus higher marks. There are three things you need to do. Analyse the question, generate ideas and identify vocabulary. Analysing the question will ensure that you answer it fully. It's quick and easy to do. You just need to identify three different types of words. Topic words, other keywords and instruction words. Topic words are the ones that identify the general subject of the question and will be found in the statement part of the question. Here's the question we're going to be working on. I've highlighted the topic words in blue. So this question is about tourism. Many people do this first step of the process, then write about the topic in general. This is a serious mistake to make and leads to low marks for task achievement. What we need to do now that we know the general topic is to understand exactly what aspect of tourism we're being asked to write about. The other keywords in the question tell you the specific topic your essay must be about. By highlighting these words, it's easy to see that you're being asked to write about the conflicting issues of tourism being a main source of income in many places, yet also being a source of problems. Your essay must only include ideas relevant to this aspect of tourism. The instruction words are the question itself. They tell you exactly what to include in your essay. Here we're required to write about the advantages of tourism in relation to income generation, the disadvantage of tourism in relation to the problems it causes, and we must give our opinion as to whether the advantages outweigh the disadvantages. Note the use of the synonyms benefits and drawbacks in the second sentence of the question. The next task is to generate some ideas to write about. There are several different ways to think up ideas. I cover them fully on the web page and in the video on task 2 essay planning that I mentioned earlier. I'm going to demonstrate two of them for you here. The friends technique, which is suitable for most IELTS essays, and the example method, which perfectly fits essay structure 2 for advantages and disadvantages essays. The friends technique is the method I generally prefer as it allows you to take a step back from the stress of the exam situation and to think more calmly. Here's how it works. Imagine that you're chatting with a friend over a cup of coffee and they ask you this question. What are the first thoughts that come into your mind? Plan your essay around these ideas. Doing this will help you to come up with simple answers in everyday language rather than straining your brain to think of amazing ideas using high level language which isn't necessary. Here are my ideas using the friends technique. There are far too many ideas here to include in an essay of just over 250 words. Think up a few then pick one advantage and one disadvantage that you think you can develop well. Pause the video and read through my ideas. With the example method, on the other hand, you start by thinking of specific examples related to the question. They can come from your own experience or be something you've heard or read about. These examples will generate ideas that will become the main points of your essay. It works particularly well for the model question I've selected for this lesson which is why I've included the second essay structure. Here are my ideas using the example technique. Again, pause the video and read through them. Now that we have some ideas, we're almost ready to start writing our essay. But first, we have one more task to do. During the planning stage, quickly jot down some vocabulary that comes to mind as you decide what you're going to write about, especially synonyms of key words. This will save you having to stop and think of the right language while you're writing. We're ready to begin writing our essay. 
For the first model answer, I'm going to take you step by step through essay structure 2. I'll then give you a model answer for essay structure 1. Here's a reminder of the question and the essay structure. When you've read these, we'll start work on the introduction. The introduction to an advantages and disadvantages essay should have a simple two or three part structure. Paraphrase the question, outline the main ideas and state your opinion if required. Our tourism question asks for our opinion, so our introduction will have three parts. Start your introduction by paraphrasing the question statement. Here's the statement. A lot of places in the world rely on tourism as a main source of income. Unfortunately, tourism can also be the source of problems if it's not well managed. And this is one way you could paraphrase it, that is, to say the same thing in a different way. Although holidaymakers contribute hugely to the economies of many popular destinations, the influx of tourists can also cause serious issues. Note my use of synonyms for some of the key words. It's fine to repeat one or two words if you can't think of suitable synonyms, but above all, your language must sound natural. Now we need to add a statement where we outline the main points that we'll be covering in the rest of the essay. That is, an advantage of tourism and a disadvantage of tourism. Here are the two main ideas I've chosen to write about. For the advantage I've chosen Poor areas are now prosperous tourist resorts. And for the disadvantage, I've chosen the displacement of local people. This is one way to develop them into an outline sentence. This essay will demonstrate how tourism can transform the economy of poor areas, but it will also show that this can lead to such problems as a displacement of local people. The question also asks for our opinion and it's essential that we include it in the introduction. I've decided to argue that the advantages of the tourist industry do outweigh the disadvantages, so this is my opinion statement. Whilst acknowledging that there are drawbacks, the essay will argue that the advantages of the tourist industry outweigh the disadvantages. So let's bring the three elements of our introduction together. Although holidaymakers contribute hugely to the economies of many popular destinations, the influx of tourists can also cause serious issues. This essay will demonstrate how tourism can transform the economy of poor areas, but will also show that this can lead to such problems as a displacement of local people. Whilst acknowledging that there are drawbacks, the essay will argue that the advantages of the tourist industry outweigh the disadvantages. This introduction achieves three important functions. It shows the examiner that you understand the question. It acts as a guide to the examiner as to what your essay is about. And it also helps to keep you focused and on track as you write. The two ideas in your introduction will become your two main body paragraphs. Main body paragraph 1 will be about poor areas becoming prosperous tourist resorts and main body paragraph 2 will be about the displacement of local people. Main body paragraphs written using structure 2 should contain three things. A topic sentence where we give an example, an explanation where we explain the advantages or benefits and the consequences where we state the result. The topic sentence summarises the main idea of the paragraph. It plays an important role in ensuring that your ideas flow logically from one to another. It does this by acting as a signpost for what's to come next, that is, what the paragraph will be about. If you maintain a clear development of ideas throughout your essay, you'll get a high mark for task achievement and for cohesion and coherence. In this instance, the topic sentence will introduce our first example, for which I've chosen Thailand. I state this in one simple sentence. One country that has experienced a significant economic boost from tourism is Thailand. Next, we must write an explanation sentence 
that states the main point of our example. Here's one way we could write it. Over the past 50 years, many of its small fishing villages, where people often struggle to make a living, have been developed into thriving holiday destinations. Finally, we explain the consequence or result of the situation. This is where we give an example of one specific advantage. It's better to pick one and develop it than just add a long list. Here's one way we could do it. With all the hotels, restaurants, shops and other tourist facilities that have been developed, there are now enough jobs for everyone and the general standard of living has greatly increased. Many local people have spotted new business opportunities and become entrepreneurs, which have further diversified the economy. That's the three parts of our first main body paragraph complete. Here's the finished paragraph. I've colour coded it to highlight the three parts. Pause the video and read it through so that you can hear how the three parts flow from one to another. We'll now follow the same process for our second main body paragraph. First we write the topic sentence to summarise the main idea. The main idea for main body paragraph 2 is the displacement of local people. This time I'll use Venice as the example. Here's the idea summarised in a topic sentence. In Venice, on the other hand, the huge popularity of the beautiful canals and stunning architecture with visitors from around the world has had a negative impact on local residents. Now for the explanation sentence that states the main point of the example. The growing need for tourist accommodation, places to eat and shops have forced many people from their homes to make way for this new development. And finally, a specific example to explain the consequence. Not only have these people suffered by having to move away from their family and friends, but the situation has also resulted in a lost sense of community in the worst affected areas. That's the three parts of the second main body paragraph complete. Here's the finished paragraph. Pause the video again and read through it. Now we need a conclusion and our advantages and disadvantages essay is done. The conclusion is a summary of the main points in your essay and can generally be done in a single sentence. It should never introduce new ideas. If you're below the minimum 250 words after you've written your conclusion, you can add a prediction or recommendation statement. Our essay is already near the minimum word limit, so we don't need this extra sentence. But you can learn more about how to write a prediction or recommendation statement on my webpage about task 2 conclusions and in the related video. I put a link to them in the notes below this video. The conclusion is the easiest sentence in the essay to write, but one of the most important. A good conclusion will neatly end the essay Link all your ideas together, sum up your argument or opinion and answer the question. If you achieve this, you'll get a good score for both task achievement and cohesion and coherence, which together make up 50% of the overall marks. Without a conclusion, you'll score below band 6 for task achievement. You can start almost any final paragraph of an IELTS Advantages and Disadvantages essays with the words in conclusion or to conclude. Now all you need to do is briefly summarise the main ideas into one sentence. Here's a top tip. Go back and read the introduction to the essay because this is also a summary of the essay. It outlines what you're going to write about. To create a great conclusion you simply have to paraphrase the introduction. This is the introduction we wrote earlier. Although holidaymakers contribute hugely to the economies of many popular destinations, the influx of tourists can also cause serious issues. This essay will demonstrate how tourism can transform the economy of poor areas, but will also show that this can lead to such problems as the displacement of local people. Whilst acknowledging that there are drawbacks, the essay will argue that the advantages of the tourist industry outweigh the disadvantages. 
and here's the same information formed into a conclusion. In conclusion, although mass tourism can sometimes result in local residents having to be relocated, it greatly improves the lives of most people, as well as contributing significantly to the national economy. Hence, the positive effects of developing a tourist industry definitely outweigh the drawbacks. That's it, we've completed our essay. Here it is with the four paragraphs put together. It's on this slide and the next one. I'll leave you to read through the whole essay yourself if you want to. Just pause the video and come back when you're ready. And now here's a model answer for essay structure one. First, a reminder of the structure. Pause the video if you want to read through it. And here's a reminder of the ideas I generated using the friends technique. I've underlined the ideas I've chosen to write about in this second essay. They are provide jobs for local people and increased crime and illegal activities involving drugs. Now for the essay. It's on this slide and the next one. As you read it, see if you can identify the different parts of the essay and how I've developed them. So that brings us to the end of this lesson. Now it's time for you to get practicing. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon. Goodbye for now.